Today, Dad and I are off on another very exciting Chinese food adventure. Uh, Dad, have you been enjoying these little excursions we've been doing? Oh yeah, it's great. Well, you're really gonna like uh, the one we're doing today. I think you're really gonna like this food. Um, I'm taking you to a suburb of Sydney called Burwood, uh, which has a lot of really amazing Chinese restaurants. And I'm taking you to eat arguably China's most famous street food snack. It's called a rojiamo. Have you ever heard of that before? Oh no, but does it have jam in it? I like jam. No, not jam, no, jam or. Um, it literally translates to meat sandwiched in bread and it's actually referred to as the world's oldest hamburger or world's oldest sandwich. So kind of like your jam idea, it, there will be things between bread, but it won't be jam. It definitely won't be jam. So it's the oldest? <laughs> the oldest. So do they like keep it in the freezer or something? It's not like a thousand year old snack. It's been made the same way for like thousands and thousands ah. of years. Yeah, yeah. So um, super delicious. You're really going to love it. Uh, excited. I'm also excited to eat it myself. I'm, I'm excited too. I'm a bit of a hamburger connoisseur. <laughs> I know, um, you know, we've got good hamburgers in Australia. Egg and bacon hamburger, the Hawaiian special. What's a Hawaiian special? That's when it's got a pineapple ring. Oh, what about beetroot? Uh, I don't want a real in my hamburger. <laughs> Australians love to put beetroot on their hamburger. I came across this article online that sums up the whole Australian beetroot on hamburger situation quite well. It states here, For some reason, the idea of hamburger wrapping stained by beetroot juice was accepted as the sign of a great hamburger. People can get quite emotional over the subject of Australian hamburgers. Some say a real hamburger must have slices of canned beetroot and others still declare its inclusion as a travesty. So as you can see, this is obviously a very emotionally charged and sensitive topic for many Australians. I don't completely understand it myself. I would prefer a rojiamo over a hamburger any day. Or a chicken burger? Is it better than a chicken burger? It's better than any burger, but I was oh. born Chinese in a past life, so... I have high expectations. It's going to change your life. I'm not even joking. You are going to fall in love with a rojiamo. Like, what's not to love? Sounds good. Bread. Meat. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a fast driver. Shut up! <laughs> so we have arrived in Burwood and the variety of Chinese restaurants is amazing. Every place we're passing is like a food from a different place in China. This is what we're gonna get. Ooh. Nice. That one Looks there. Good. Do you want to order for us? Yeah, okay. Liangge. 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 Say it again. Liangge. 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 Not ke, ge. Liangge. Rojamo. Liangge. Liangge. Rojamo. Rojamo. Okay. Liangge rojamo. Ha! Very good. Have you eaten? Yes. Three dishes. We are here at Xi'an Eatery, um, which specializes in food from Xi'an. We went to Xi'an together, remember? Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but we didn't eat rojiamo then. No. Because back then, even I didn't know about rojiamo. Yeah. I've only kind of done a deep dive into Chinese food in the last like three years or so. Mm. I think we missed out on a lot of the good food when we were in Xi'an together. Yeah, Xi'an has a lot of amazing food. Like Shanxi food in general is delicious because it has all of those Arabic influences from the Silk Road. Xi'an was actually the starting point of the legendary Silk Road, a 6,400 kilometer trading route that connected China and other Eastern countries with Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. So as a result, this city became a real melting pot of culture. Most of the Muslim population of Xi'an is actually descended from Arab traders that migrated here after doing trade with China on the Silk Road. So the result of this is a bustling Muslim quarter here in the center of Xi'an. So there's a lot of Arabic influence mm. in Xi'an, so there's even a food street quarter. That's right, the Muslim Xi'an. road. The Muslim road. Yeah, but I remember the, the Muslim market particularly because they had these meat on sticks yeah. and they must have been good because there was the were the beans were overflowing, yeah, yeah. and they were just like a mile and now the sticks. And I thought, okay, the turnover has got to be high. It's got to be good. Yeah. Oh, oh, thank you. 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 Thank
Um, they look nice. They do look nice. They See, this is the fresh. special bread that I was telling you about. Oh, okay. It has yes. many, many thousands of years of history. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Grab one. Okay. Here you go. Oh, ooh, nice and crispy on the outside. Ooh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> juicy. Mm. I'm so juicy. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> That's spilling all the juice. Those Rojao Mo juices will get you. Oh, really good. Mm -hmm. Crispy. Moist. When I was in Xi'an more recently, I'm watching people make Rojao Mo on the street. It's so interesting. They've got like this piece of meat that has been stewing or braising for like hours and hours and hours they get it out of the pot and then they kind of get their big cleaver and they slice up the meat into all these little like it's almost like a pulled pork sandwich essentially but the smell coming off it is absolutely amazing you know how smells are very evocative mm -hmm. And you can put that sm the smell. Mm -hmm. What's mean that Muslim market? Yeah, hundred percent. Because when you walk through that Muslim market, people are that. stewing this meat yeah. all day, every day. Um, you smell it. And it smells that you good. Can still remember. Yeah. We wanted to try it, but we were you know, nervous. That's why I want to make this series of videos because people may be going on trips to see Anne which is like maybe a trip of a lifetime for some people, you know, a big trip of the year. And they're walking through these markets and they're not gonna try the local specialties. So hopefully this can encourage people to know, oh, in Xi'an you should go try a Rotao more. Um, or even when you're in your, you know, your home country, if you go to a Chinatown, I'd put money on the fact that you'd be able to find a Rotao more, so. Mm. Oh, we definitely have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah so definitely good. It. Don't stick just to the um, sweets out pork or something. No, exactly. Because yeah. you went on a tour of China once, right? And it was... What kind of food did you eat on the group tour? Well, they gave us very what we call cookie cutter. Everything was always the the, the same type of thing. Always, And they were nice, yeah. but I don't think they were authentic. terribly authentic. Think, we were yeah. asking for some authentic stuff. Yeah. And, and only three people on the tour wanted authentic stuff. How many people were on your tour? 20 oh, odd. Oh my gosh. And there were some people on our tour that had never had chili before. Chili. And never eaten garlic before. Because I guess those kind of tours are catering to a crowd of people that are maybe just being first introduced to Chinese food. But it is such a shame. Like, imagine going to Chengdu, like the food capital of China, and not trying some of the amazing yeah. spicy food there. And that's what we missed a little bit. Yeah. But you've got to remember, even with me growing up, when I grew up, my first Chinese restaurant I went to was when I was about 17. Wow, I yeah. You were, you were your first Chinese restaurant when you were... We took you as a baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was telling someone yesterday that, um, you know, I've been using chopsticks since I was literally a baby. I remember when we used to go to Yum Cha and they would give me um, the two chopsticks with a bit of serviette, with the serviette and, the and the rubber bands, rubber bands around yeah. it to teach me how to use it when and I was, they, what, like three or four? Yeah, yeah. But do you remember that time we went to the Chinese restaurant and you went, oh, tomato sauce? And before we could stop you, she stuck a finger in it and eaten the chili, it was chili sauce. Oh <laughs> and she, my god. Her face went, oh, I wish I had a video of it. I wish I had a video oh, too. That would so be great funny. content. The bread is really good. The bread is awesome. The bread gives it like that crunch mm -hmm. and um, the texture. Look at all that juice. Yeah. <laughs> it's Dan's, all over me. <laughs> Dan's dropped a lot of Rodamo juice on his pants. Mm. It'd be awkward walking around later. I'm already jammed in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> I go down mode in my pants. <laughs> I want a t-shirt with that on it. It's very tasty. Very tasty. Would you recommend to a friend? Yeah, I would. How do, how do you think it compares to the Australian hamburger? Oh, completely different. Yeah, it's, yeah. you almost can't compare them. And it's beef, not pork. It's pork. I'm pretty sure it's pork. This is beef or beef? Beef. Oh. Oh. So, in general, beef and pork are both beef? Yes. It has two types of beef. One is beef. Oh. You want to get more? No, we're getting other street snacks. Oh, we are? Okay. But I, I, I'm going to eat another one of those. I know. Keep your energy and your stomach capacity. That's my thing. Good. Let's go to the next place. I'm going to take you to another street food snack. Okay. Oh, Oh, 
that this is an actual character in Chinese. This is one word or a sentence? It's just one word. Oh, thank you. What's the, what's the word? Xixie. Okay. Uh, for the name of the noodles we like. You know Biang Biang Mian? Biang Biang Mian. This is Biang. Oh, that's Biang. That's Biang. Can you do it? Can you write it? No. Xixie. 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 Bye bye. That was really good. I know, right? Han Hao. Han Hao. Fei Chang Hao. Han Hao. You can say, also say Fei Chang Hao, which means Fei, really good. Fei Chang Hao. Yes, that was really good, actually. Fei Chang Hao. Yeah. The place we want to go to is in 120 meters. Wait, I don't need. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just up ahead. Okay, Dad. This is the situation. Oh, foot massage. Oh. Stop getting distracted. Okay, so this is called Gorkwe. So, Dad, you can see here, she's rolling out this thing into like a pancake. Inside, there's meat. And then she's going to take that and stick it inside this hot oven thing. Okay. So, there's meat inside there. Inside, yeah. Look at this. Oh, Look what okay. she's about to do. Crispy. Dad is having fun in here. It's hot. Mm. Nice. What do you like about it? Hot. Crispy. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Very fragrant, isn't it? Yes, this is like the, the, the thin brother of, <laughs> oh, <laughs> of Rojamo. <laughs> Rojamo's thin brother, yeah. And how? <laughs> uh, what, what, what's the other one? Fei Chang Hao. Fei Chang Hao. Dad has gotten himself a chocolate milk tea with apple pearls, apple popping pearls, right? Apple popping pearls. Apple popping pearls and, and custard. custard. It'll be a strange combination, but maybe it's just the combination the world has been waiting for. I would definitely have that again. Mm. That's a good choice. Thanks so much for joining me today, Dad. Thanks for having me. Let's do it again soon. Cheers. Cheers.